Well, hello there, love bugs. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already a part of our Bella Book Club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies. Yes, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's talk about I, Tina, My Life Story, Tina Turner with Kurt Loder, part seven. So where we left off, mm -hmm. Ike and Tina, the Ike and Tina review was set to do a show with Jackie Wilson. Answer no, because Ickety Ikety was paranoid. He said, oh no, 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 no. She can't have this baby here in Las Vegas. So they hightailed it to Los Angeles because in Ickety Ikety's mind, okay, while she having this baby, I can work. Okay. So they got to LA in about one o'clock in the morning. Tina Turner started having pains. Now, Ickety Ikety ain't no help. So he called his, uh, uh, let's let, what's her name? Her name is Annie Mae. Okay. She is the white chauffeur that she is actually like, uh, what is the name of the dude that Diddy had? Dick Dies Diddy had this guy named Bentley. Was it Bentley? What, what was the guy's name? Anyway, it's this white woman named Annie Mae. He can't do shit on his own. So he called Annie Mae. Annie Mae, this girl fitting to have his baby. Annie Mae say, look, I know this doctor who will shoot you with some kind of shot that will freeze up your muscles. And then that way you'll make it to the hospital because she wasn't going to make it to the damn hospital. But anyway, the hospital was a long way away. Okay. Everybody in the car, they had to stop first to the doctor who was giving Annie Mae that shot to stop her from having a baby. Danger, danger. Something ain't right to me about a shot that stop you from having babies. Is that possible? But anyway, but anyway, um, so they stopped, got the shot. It didn't matter. She damn near had the baby in the, uh, right on the ride over there, but it didn't work out that way. She ended up having a baby in the hospital, thankfully. Okay. In the early morning hours of October 27th, Tina gave birth to her second son, Ronald Renale. Ronald Renale. What was the baby's last name? Anyway, the baby, as Lorraine, among others, was not slow to notice, had a very familiar look about him. Mm -hmm, I told you that. I told you Miss Lorraine was going to figure it out as soon as she seen the baby. I mean, because Ickety Ickety ain't no easy on the eyes type face type dude. You know, God bless you, Ickety Ickety. Okay, but I mean, you know, he got real strong features. Anyway. Tina says, that was a shameful period for me. Up till then, Lorraine never really knew what was going on because Ike and I had kept our relationship sort of low-key. Everyone thought we were still just friends, but out on the road, the fans all thought Ike was my husband because I was pregnant and I was out there with him. Okay, and that was a dilemma for Lorraine, but she hardly ever traveled with us, so she thought the fans just misunderstood the situation. Okay, but you know, when Lorraine was dead, there was a totally different dynamic. Okay, you know, Tina Turner sitting up front in the passenger seat, pregnant as hell with Igni Ikeny baby and Lorraine and uh, Ike in the back canoodling with each other. Okay. So Lorraine, she looking sideways, you know, but for real, Lorraine was thinking that she was fooling around with, or that Ickety Ickety was fooling around with one of the Ikeettes. They didn't want his ass. Well, maybe they did later on, but, you know, I don't know. But anyway, that wasn't the person who Ickety Ickety was, you know, had pregnant at the time. It was Tina the Turner. Tina the Turner was in such a friggin' situation that when... It was a threesome, meaning Ike, uh, Lorraine, and Tina, that when fans would walk up to them and they would see Ike 
and Lorraine holding hands, people were confused. They'd be like, wait a minute, what the hell is going on here? Uh, I thought Ike was your husband. Why is he sucking face with that lady? Tina Turner said that she had to be like, no, 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 you got it wrong. No, no, no. No, they got it right. You got it wrong, girl. You got it wrong. Okay, let me take it back. He was fooling around with one of the I gets too. Oh, that ickety, ickety. Oh, my God. That Scorpio had y'all brains gone. You hear me? Y'all heads was gone. He was hunching. He was doing anything that he wanted to do. Tina says, here I was. Having a baby for this man, and here he was with his common-law wife that I was replacing eventually. And when she left to go back home again, I really was like Ike's wife, okay? But only when the common-law wife wasn't around. That was a trick of boo-boo because I thought he was married to the girl. Answer no. Uh Uh-uh. No. Tina Turner said when the baby was born and he came out looking just like Ike, That's when Lorraine finally got fed up and decided to leave him. So eventually, we got all the kids, and we just started living together. But the whole thing was a public scandal and really embarrassing. Now, that was definitely not in the book. Definitely not in the book. I mean, not in the book, not in the movie. Because the way they picked it was that, uh, Lorraine lost her mind, shot herself in the face. You know, I mean, she shot herself in the stomach. And, you know, that's part of the reason why they ended up with all the kids. You know, the book didn't say anything about that two of the children that was in the movie was Tina Turner's. I mean, it, it they really messed my head up. When did this movie come out? Like in 1986? I have been fooled for fucking, what is this, 30 years? My Jesus. Okay, so this is the part. Listen here. Y'all tell me what y'all think about this because um, Tina, I don't know, girl. Tina, I don't know. I mean, you're going to definitely need more people because I don't believe you, girl. Okay? She said when she had the baby, she only got three days to uh, get her strength back together, right? She said she was real weak, but she rested for two of the days. And then she went on to do a show, Okay? Now, because Ike continued to work, he had decided to hire another woman. This is where I'm like, come on, Tina. Come on, Tina. I don't know, baby. I don't know. But anyway, uh, Ike decided to hire a lookalike Tina, okay? Just so happened that the lookalike Tina was a prostitute, what I tell you. I said that damn Ike maneuvers like a damn pimp. I told you that. I told you that. So anyway, ickety ickety, this nigga is slime. He is slime. Okay, slime. All right. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna talk bad about him because I swear it's some things in this book that Tina Turner is not being one hundred percent honest about. Okay, you know which kind of makes her look naive, but I'm looking at her like, girl, come on, the public got eyes. When we read in this book, unless you is dumb as hell, you know, you know what the hell is going on. So anyway, getting to it, okay? Tina says, actually, the girl was a prostitute, and she had been turning tricks, too. And, of course, the men she pulled had thought that they were making love to me. Can you believe it? And so, yeah. Because if I say, uh, here go my wife, do you want to fuck her? You know, and you know men. I mean, if it's a dog with a peach on it, they'll fuck her. Okay, they don't give a hell about none of the respect. So you got all these men out here thinking that they hunched Tina Turner. Okay, and Ike was okay with that. You are okay with your lead singer. You know what? Ike probably got a grip off of making, having them men thinking that they was hunching Tina Turner. Now, according to Tina, she in a hospital, you know, trying to lay up. But in them couple of days, I got there selling pussy. Or sell, what is that, what is that, uh, what is that when you get an imposter pussy? That's what they sell, okay? Now, Tina say how she got rid of the girl was one day Ike wasn't around and she whooped her ass. 
Tina said that she didn't realize her own strength because she got sick and tired of all those men that the prostitute was hunching on, calling up to her room going, hey, can we get another good time tonight, you know. Tina said she got sick of it. So what she did was she told the girl to come on upstairs, okay, picked her up and threw her in a bathtub. Tina said she didn't realize her own strength. Girl, we saw your strength. Them arms was cut. Man, Tina was small, but she was sexy. You hear me? Sexy. I think anybody with little titties is sexy to me. I just love just the mere thought of walking around without a bra on. That just, I just love it. You know, I couldn't do that, you know, because y'all know I'm like 36. F. So the situation happened like this, okay? You know, I is still trying to put the fake Tina on stage, okay? You know, and still trying to make her sell pussy while she out there on stage, right? But, you know, like I said, Tina turned and picked her up and threw her in a bathtub, right? Tina said she was real, you know, real, real weak and stuff because she just had the baby, okay? But she went out there, did two songs, and came back and sat down. So it worked out okay. And then she said after that, that's when she got two weeks to completely recover. Now let's get into the wigs, okay? She said she down Washington, D.C., okay? Now Tina had decided that she wanted to bleach her hair because that was the thing at that time. The problem was she said that the lady left the bleach on her head too long and all her hair fell out. So when I got in and back to D.C. to wherever it was. Now, he wasn't there at first because he was back in St. Louis because they was, you know, charging his ass with uh, bank robbery. What the hell? That nigga making music, selling pussy, and robbing banks? Mm, that damn ickety ickety, okay? You ain't never got to worry about him. He will always get him a bag, okay? So anyway, when I got back from St. Louis, you know, trying to beat that charge, he said, Tina, what the fuck is going on with your hair? Or anime, what the hell is wrong with your hair? Then, instead of him going down to uh, Sally's Beauty Supply down there on, um, what's that street right there? Where's Sally's Beauty Supply? Over there on uh, Marlboro Pike. He flew all the way to East St. Louis to buy the wig and then come back. I say he don't know why the hell he did it when he could just bought the wig down the street. Yeah, why did you do it? You know why he did it? Because it was probably some vagina back there waiting for him. He probably was trying to make back up with Lorraine. That's why he did it. Anyway, Tina liked wearing wigs because she said she felt very classy and it looked real good on her and I guess why they dancing you know, swinging their hair around. She just thought it just looked real animated. It did. It added flair to the show. Now, 1961 was the year of the dance crazes, okay? You got the bunny hop, the jitterbug, the twist, you know, which she said was a phenomenon, I would agree. You know, then you got the pony time, the mashed potato, the hully gully, the slop, then the fly. So funny. I remember my mother trying to show me all them dances. I'd be like, girl, you was dancing like that? But she, that era didn't look no stupid than, you know, these young people do now doing dances. I mean, hell, I used to do the Cabbage Patch, hey, the WAP, the Running Man, you know, so. Now, while we have all these dance crazes going on, Tina and I get rehearsed endlessly trying to get, uh, incorporate everything that's new, young, and hip into their performances, which worked out well. In the wake of a second big hit, it's going to work out fine. I remember that. I remember that song. I think it's going to work out fine. I love that song. Okay? Okay, so that's the big hit. But, you know, Ike is a do-it-yourself kind of dude. Okay? So he don't have to worry about paying for business transportation, management, producers, none of that. He keeps all the money himself, including the money that he got. Or they're including, you know, Tina Turner's money, the fake one, you know, the one that was selling pussy, and the real one, okay? Because, you know, he don't give her nothing but $25 here. This enough for you to, you know, I don't know, okay? But I'm going to keep everything else, all right? 
1962, he decided the time was ripe to move at last to California. The St. Louis scene had been good to him. But by now, with two top 30 pop hits under his belt, he had outgrown it. In L.A., I could hustle with the big boys. True, he lacked the charisma as a performer, and that would probably never come. Ike remained happiest on stage with his back to the audience, calling the songs and delineating the groove with the drummer. But Tina, with her resounding voice, her heartbreaker face, her knockout legs, Tina had the star power to spare. And Ike, in an increasingly complete way, had Tina. So, it's like how I always say that, you know, ladies, once you realize that you have the power, you know, you must hold on to that power. You must never release that power, okay? You can never show fear to a tiger or a bear or, you know, a rabid dog. You can never do that, girl. Even in your instance where you feel the weakest and insecure because he is fucking every bitch in the eye catch. You can never show weakness, girl. You can't do that. That's how you remain your power. Once they know that you love them, oh, girl, oh, girl, mm-mm, mm-mm. You can't do that, you know, unless you're in something true, real, and um, loving. This relationship ain't loving. This ain't loving. So, because Tina had the power, and you know, Ike can't have nobody having more power than him. You know there had to be some changes made, okay? Now, this is where Tina is killing me, right? She said she began to realize how unhappy she was with her life. She said, I guess I achieved success of some kind, but the truth was it was constant hard work. Hell, yeah. Look at Beyonce. Beyonce don't do shit but practice and be hard at work. That's all she do. You know, in in the interim, she might eat some Kentucky Fried Chicken, okay? But that's all Beyonce do. That's what it is. That's how you are successful, hard work. That's why I call myself the hardest working storyteller on YouTube. I'm telling y'all, it's hard work. But I know that you don't get to the place that you want to be without it. Remember, neighbor, Rob told you. She said that it was nothing to drive 700 miles from one show to the next. Ike sitting in the back seat with his guitar, me, and maybe an I cat or two there with him singing and practicing new tunes all the way. It never stopped. Tina said, I know people say that them old classics were the best, but Tina said she began to hate them, okay? She said, Ike always had her screaming and screeching. And you know what? Now that I look at all their old music and I look at the videos, her ass was always screaming and screeching. It sounds good. She's a good screamer and screecher, but it's rare that I hear her not screaming and screeching. She said outside of the hard work, it was the relationship with Ike that made her most unhappy. He was totally unpredictable. You're screaming around with me like that for no reason. And then you knew nowhere. I'm sorry. And then you knew we're going to get it. You just never knew when. Out of nowhere, he would leap up from the couch and walk right up to me and pow. That's because he is terrified that you're going to leave him. Okay? So he has to control you. And like Tina Turner said, she has to control, he has to control her with fear. Okay? Because he knows that if you ever got the gumption together to get yourself up and move away from him, He's not going to be the same man. You are the million-dollar goose, Tina DeTurner. Now, this is, the, this is the part that really, really, like, fucked me up, okay? So, we all remember Eat the Cake anime. Eat the Cake anime. We all remember that, okay? So, let me read you how the actual scene went, okay? She said that he could be so mean. One time, he made me eat a whole pound cake. We'd stop outside a store somewhere and sent somebody inside to get some food. They came back with this pound cake, and I said, 
and said that I'd ordered it. I said, no, I didn't. I said, well, you want to eat it? And I had, <clears throat> I'm sorry, and I had to sit there and eat the whole cake while he watched. So that scene that they did and what's love got to do with it was so blown up. I mean, it is so many things in this book that I'm like, come the fuck on, Joe. I mean, it's things that happened to her mother that they said happened to her in the movie. But in the book, there were scenes that happened to her mother. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's not crazy, God damn it. It's deception. Hold tight. Now, Tina say the kids, his two sons, Ike Jr. and Michael, my son Craig, you know, with the other dude, okay, the old band member that was friends with Ickety Ikety. That's why I'm like, I don't know why the hell people think that uh, Tina Turner was a victim. Oh, she wasn't no victim. She wasn't no victim. I mean, nobody deserves to get dead. You know, that pop, pop, pop. Nobody deserves that, but I mean... I mean, she done did some shit in this book, okay? So she's saying her son, Craig, and our son, Ronnie, were still back in St. Louis, okay? So we rented a place, and we just continued working. That was our life. Child, don't nobody raise their own children in the industry? Now, she says by the time that they moved to L.A., Ike had to hire some more band members. Why? Because I told you them other men was in there like, you're not befitting to talk to me like I'm a dog, okay? You might be, you know, putting your hands on these women, but nigga, I'll give you some go, okay? Then Ike wouldn't pay them appropriately, okay? So then that'd be another reason why they leave. And just because Ike didn't know how to talk to people. So they still got the Ikeettes in place, the ones with um, Miss Roby there, okay? But there were still uh, two more I guess that we want to talk about right quick. This one named Benetta Fields. She was a 21-year-old gospel singer from Buffalo who was enamored with the Ike and Tina Turner review. You know, she was out. She was known locally for being a good singer, and she was friends with this DJ. Hey, uh, Benetta, guess what? Uh, do you want to sing? No, no, no. She said, hey, he said, hey, Vanetta, can you get that girl that sing with you to um, trial for the I guess? Vanetta said, answer, no. I don't know where that bitch is, okay, but I'll sing for her, okay? The DJ grabbed her, took her in the back where Ike was. Ike said, you hired. Now, Miss Vanetta, Vanetta also talks about a time where they hired this one I get. And so, no, you can't do that around that time. Miss Vanetta said that the girl's name was Bonnie Bramlett, okay? She wasn't the best singer, but she got picked up to be an iCat. I'm saying to myself, uh, was she really an iCat, or is she just somebody else that Ike is going to be hunching, you know, secretly? But anyway, the problem came in where she had to go, and where Ike said, oh, no, we can't hire a white Ike at ever was because during that time, things were still racially touchy, okay? So when they went to, where were they? Kentucky, girl, Kentucky. Oh, my God, okay? But when they went to Kentucky, they had a situation where, uh, you know, some people rode up on the car and pointed her out despite them trying to make her look black. How, how does that happen? How do you? How does that happen? I mean, uh, but anyway, they said they put shoe polish in her hair or something and some tan stuff. And child, she said by the woman's own admission, Bonnie Bramlett said that she was the whitest woman in the world. Okay, and they put some shoe polish on her on her hair. She had white hair. Okay, but some people that were not happy to see the two colors mixed came up to the car. And really did some damage, you know. And Ike said, that's it. It, it, I'm, it. It's not worth me dealing with this kind of pressure from these fools out here. Just to have a white Ike. Meanwhile, Ike and Tina began to fade from the charts. Poor Fool, released at the end of 1961, was a blatant rewrite of A Fool in Love. It lingered on the pop charts for 11 weeks, peaking at number 38. I'm a la 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 was even less successful. 
a new rendition of Prancing. Ike's old theme song went nowhere. Their early songs at their best were vibrant and star and st- what is that? And startling earthy. A power commercial transfigure a power commercial transfiguration of the roadhouse blues of Ike's Delta Youth. But they also began to reveal the limits of Ike's composition compositional abilities. Mm, limits that Tina was already beginning to find stifling. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yikes. Tina continued. Tina's continued presence on record in the review was obviously imperative. Ike decided to marry her. Mm -hmm. Ain't that what niggas do? That's what they do. Ooh, shit. She can give me some money. I can't let her go. Okay. She ain't going to let me keep putting my hands on her. So I don't know. Okay. I'm going to have to do something drastic. That's what the niggas always do. Okay. Danger. When a ninja jump out there and marry you out the blue child, either you didn't call him cheating, you know, with the next door neighbor's dog or something, or, you know, your sister, or, you know, he didn't call the charge or something. He know he going to jail. You know, that's why them ninjas always be like, marry me, marry me. Anyway. Okay. So, uh, Tina says it's a strategy that had always proved effective in the past whenever he required the prolonged services of a useful woman. If y'all can see my face right now, I get it. Why y'all want to, you know, why y'all want me to be on camera, but I told you I have company and that's not going to be possible all the time. Okay. But Ike says, I wasn't really going to marry her. Now, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share the Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. And remember this, the same people that you meet on the way up will be the same people that you meet on the way down. My naysayers, my patron loves, you babies have a good one. Peace.